Hey guys, it's Miss Alicia, and I'm here with your community kids lesson for this week. Um, this is not ideal. Guys, I, I pray that we can get back to church soon because I miss you guys, and I love you guys, and I'm praying for you guys, and I cannot wait until we can all be together again at church. Um, but at the same time, I'm very thankful that we still have this way to communicate with you guys and that we can still bring you a community kids lesson even though we can't all be together at church right now. Um, so before we do get into our lesson though, I definitely want to go ahead and pray. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now before we start. God, we are so thankful um, that you have still allowed us to be able to communicate the truths of your word um, to each of these kids, Lord. And I just pray that the message um, of the lesson today um, that, that the kids would really understand what it means to truly trust you, fully trust you. Um, and God, that especially through this difficult time that we're all going through, that we can, um, that we can trust you and we can trust that you have a plan for us. And I just pray now that you'll bless this time in Jesus name. Amen. All right, guys. So I want to ask you a question. How many of you like to help mom and dad in the kitchen? My kids love to help me in the kitchen, okay? Anytime we're going to cook something or bake something right away, the kids are all, all three of them are right there. Can we help? Can we help? Can we help? Um, and we try to let them help in some way, whether in a big way or in a small way, we try to let them help. Um, but sometimes we actually have to ask them to step out of the kitchen. We have a very small kitchen, and when we go to open the oven, it kind of, takes up most of our oven door open kind of takes up most of the space of our kitchen um and having the kids in there at that point would be very dangerous because they could get hurt the oven is hot um now Haley and dusty they pretty much know don't touch the oven don't touch the stove it's hot i'm gonna get hurt but sophia is still she's still learning and whenever we're cooking on the stove or whenever we open the oven, her first instinct isn't to be like, oh yeah, that's hot, I better step away. She's usually standing there staring like, oh, hey, yeah, that's kind of cool. I wonder what that is. Maybe I should touch it and find out. So whenever we open the oven or when wherever we're cooking on the stove, we ask her to step out and we tell her why. We say, this is hot, you're going to get hurt. Now, my oldest two might ask questions, but at two years old, Sophia's not going to ask, well, why, how do you know I'm going to get burned? How do you know I'm going to get hurt? How do we really know the oven is hot, mom? Maybe I should just touch it and find out. No, I just need to tell her the oven is hot. The stove is hot. Don't touch it. You will get burned. You will get hurt. And she just looks at me. Okay. And out she goes. She doesn't have to question. She doesn't have to wonder. Because she trusts me as her mom that what I'm telling her is true. She doesn't have to wonder, is mom serious? Is that really hot? Is that, a, is that oven really hot? I mean, maybe I should just touch it and find out. Maybe mom's lying to me. Maybe she's trying to trick me. No, if I'm telling her, don't touch that, it's hot, she can trust me that I'm telling her that this is hot. Please don't touch it. Don't touch it. Um, she doesn't have to wonder or question whether I'm telling her the truth or not because she trusts me. I'm her mom and she trusts me completely. Um, this is what it really means to truly trust someone. They can tell you something, they can tell you to do something, tell you not to do something, they can give you advice and you can trust right away. I'm gonna believe that and I'm gonna do it because I trust this person and that's really, kids, that's how you are with your parents. Um, that's how my kids are with us usually. When we tell them something, um, they trust us and they believe us because they know we're not going to lie to them. We're not going to, we're not trying to trick them. We're not lying to them. Um, that what we're telling them is the truth. And if we're telling them something, whether it's we want them to do something or we don't want them to do something, it's because it's what's best for them. And it's because we love them and we're, we're telling them this because it's what's best for them. Um, and they just... They just trust us. Um, like every day, my kids don't have to wonder if they're going to get lunch. They know every single day they're going to have lunch. They don't know what they're going to have for lunch, maybe, but they know they're going to have lunch. Even when we're in school, Haley knows every day there's going to be a lunchbox in her backpack. 
with lunch in it, with food in it. And Dusty and Sophia, I always send them um, to their babysitters with a lunch. So when they get to their babysitter's house, they don't have to wonder, am I going to get lunch today? Did mom put my, did mom pack us a lunch? No, they know they're going to eat. They don't even think about it because at lunchtime, they just get their lunch just like every single day. They don't have to wonder because they know mommy's going to take care of us. Mommy's going to give us lunch. Mommy's going to give us food because she gives us food every day. She takes care of us. They don't have to wonder. Um, and that's how Jesus wants us to be, even as adults. That's how Jesus wants us to be. And in our lesson today, we're going to see that Jesus was trying to teach some adults this very important lesson of having the kind of faith and the kind of trust that a child has. Because children are very trusting. Usually when somebody tells you something, usually you think, well, if they're telling me this, it must be true. Adults, as we get older, we start to question everything. Are they really telling us the truth? But usually children don't do that. Um, and, and this is the lesson that Jesus is, is going to try to communicate to people. Um, so if you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 10, verse 13. And we're only going to read a couple verses here, just verses 13 through 16. Um, but if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Mark chapter 10, verse 13. I'll give you a minute to get there. All right, so this is what the Bible says. In Mark 10, 13, And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant. or He was offended. He was upset and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Guys, at this point in his ministry, Jesus is speaking to a large crowd of people and a lot of people in this crowd brought their kids with them because they wanted them to hear Jesus and to meet Jesus. Um, and when the children tried to come forward to meet Jesus, the disciples stopped them and were like, no, 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 you can't go see Jesus. He's too busy. He's too important. He doesn't want to deal with little children. He's trying to teach these adults some very deep spiritual truths. You, you guys, just go back to your parents. Just go back to your parents. He, Jesus can't be bothered with you right now. And Jesus, the Bible says, he got upset. He got indignant. He got almost offended. How, how dare you stop these children from coming to me? Let them come. Don't hinder them. And he rebukes or he gets upset with. He tells off his disciples and says, no, don't stop them. Let them come to me. I want the children to come to me. And the reason he wanted the children to come to him it's because he was about to teach a very powerful lesson to the adults in the crowd. Um, and this lesson that he was trying to teach them is found in verse 14. He says, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. And then in verse 15, he says, Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Now, when we read this, that can be a little bit confusing. Jesus is saying whoever doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child can't enter into it. Jesus is not telling us, hey, you have to get down on your knees and act like a child. Here's some, here's some toys. Here's some games. Just get down on your knees and crawl around a little bit. Here's pacifier. Here's, you have to act like a child if you want to, you know, if you want to inherit the kingdom of God. If you want to get to heaven, this is what you have to do. You just have to act like a child. That's not what Jesus is telling us here. What Jesus is saying is that we as adults, that we need to have the kind of trust and the kind of faith that a child has. The way that you trust your mommy and daddy to tell you things and to do things that are for your good because they love you and they're taking care of you and you don't have to question, you don't have to wonder. 
are mommy and daddy really doing like is this really good you don't have to wonder that okay you don't have to wonder whether or not mom and dad are telling you to do something good or something bad if mom and dad are telling you to do something you usually just believe them and trust them you may not always want to do it but you believe that what they're telling you is the truth this is what jesus is saying about um this is what jesus is is saying about the kind of faith that we need to have the way that a child trusts their parents is the way we need to trust jesus that when we read his word sometimes we read it and we're like oh god really your word says that ah, i don't know if i believe that i don't know if if i can do that but we can trust that if it's in God's word and God has said it, that it's definitely true. That it's definitely true. And we can trust him. Okay? When the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When the Bible says that, we can trust that it's true. It's truth. We can believe it because God said it. So it's true. And we don't have to wonder if God's tricking us or if God's lying to us. We don't ever have to wonder that. And this is the kind of faith that Jesus is trying to tell people about. You need to trust me the way children trust people because children are very trusting. Um, and, and this is how Jesus wants us to trust him. Um, there is a wonderful true story in the Bible about a grown-up who had this kind of childlike faith, and his name was Zacchaeus. And I think most of you know the story of Zacchaeus. If you don't know the, the story, you probably know the song, um, which gives you a little idea of the story. Um, but if you don't know the story of Zacchaeus, very quickly, Zacchaeus was not a good man. Zacchaeus was a tax collector in his town. And he he basically robbed people. He cheated people. He, he was a tax collector. So when he collected the taxes, he took more than what he was supposed to take and pocketed and kept the extra for himself. He was so he was stealing from people and he was not a good man and obviously people didn't like him because of that so he was not a very liked person well Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was coming to his town and he wanted to meet Jesus he had heard all these amazing things about Jesus and he wanted to meet him so when Jesus came into the town there was a large crowd of people who were all crowding around trying to see Jesus and Zacchaeus was a very tiny very short little man and he couldn't see through the crowd. He couldn't see over everybody's heads. And the crowd wasn't going to let him through to Jesus. Jesus doesn't want to see you. You're a tax collector. You don't deserve to see Jesus. But Zacchaeus was like, no, I need to see Jesus. So Zacchaeus did something that grown-ups don't usually do. Zacchaeus said, I'm going to climb that tree so I can get a look at Jesus. And so... So that I can see him because I just, I need to see this man. So Zacchaeus climbed up in the tree so that he could see Jesus. And the Bible tells us that Jesus saw Zacchaeus up in that tree and said, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm going to go to your house today. I'm going to eat supper with you. That's kind of, that, that's amazing because here Zacchaeus was not a, a good man at all. And there were probably plenty of good people in that crowd that Jesus could have eaten supper with. But he chose Zacchaeus because he saw Zacchaeus' faith. He saw that Zacchaeus was so desperate to see Jesus. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I'm going to go to your house today. Zacchaeus knew that he needed not just to see Jesus, but he knew that he needed Jesus and Jesus came into his home and he fixed and he healed Zacchaeus very sinful wicked heart this is the kind of faith that Jesus wants us to have Jesus wants us to trust him when we hear the gospel guys it was Easter last Sunday and it was awesome to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and when the Bible tells us that Jesus died, he was buried, and that three days later, he rose, he came back to life. 
that seems really unbelievable because we don't know anybody who can just be dead and come back to life. We, we don't know that. that. That's impossible. But Jesus did it. And when the Bible tells us that that happened, that it's real, that it's true, we can trust it. And so, like I said earlier, when the Bible says, if you believe that Jesus died, if you believe that he was buried and you believe that he rose again the third day, and if you call upon the name of the Lord, you can be saved. Guys, we can trust that that is true. And just like Jesus fixed and healed Zacchaeus' very sinful heart, Jesus is going to fix your very wicked and sinful heart because we all have wicked and sinful hearts, guys. Every single one of us. And we need Jesus to heal that and to fix that. And when the Bible tells us that salvation is real, that salvation is true, that Jesus really did die and rise again for our sins, and that those sins can be forgiven, we don't have to wonder, is this a trick? Is Jesus just joking? No, it happened. And just the way you trust mommy and daddy when they tell you something, you can trust that what Jesus has told you is true. You can trust that his word is the truth. So guys, what I really want you to take away from this today is as you're reading your Bible or maybe as mom and dad are reading the Bible to you and they're telling you these things from, from God's word, sometimes like, you know, somebody rising from the dead. That just seems so impossible. But we can trust that it happened. We can trust that Jesus did rise again the third day. We don't have to wonder if it's just a trick or if it's a lie or a made up story. We know it's truth and we can believe that it's truth. So just the way that mommy and daddy tell you something is true, the same way you trust mommy and daddy, you can and you need to trust Jesus the same way. And that's what he's trying to teach us here today, guys. Um, so that's that's what I have for you guys. Again, I love you. I miss you. I'm praying for you. And I really hope that we can all be together again soon. Um, that's, that's all that I have. So enjoy the rest of your week, guys.